I'm on, right? Yeah. I'm on. Yeah. Okay. Hi, everyone. Welcome to You Make the Call. Uh, thanks for joining us tonight. As you can see from our three shot here, we have a, a very uh, important guest with us tonight, uh, Mayor Ted Betancourt. Um, he was gracious enough to come down and, and talk with Barry uh, and, and me and all of you about something that's um, very important to the city. He's got an important message uh, that he wants to deliver, and uh, we're grateful that he he wanted to do it on the show, and so I say thank you for that. Thanks for coming. And um, and we, you know, we took a little. Uh, I, I I wish we could take credit and say, you know, um, that we asked him to come down because it's an important show and we're we're, <laughs> we're viable and I mean, he I think he figured that out on his own, so he came all <laughs> all on his own and you know just um, you know when, when we you know we're grateful to get him down here. He said I'll be there. So um, anyway. Uh, so we're going to turn it over to, to the mayor um, and let him uh, make the presentation uh, of what he wants to say. Uh, and we're, Barry and I are going to be listening just like you folks. So, um, Mayor, you're mm -hmm. on. Well, first, I just want to thank you, Dick, and thank you, Barry, uh, for allowing me to come on the show and uh, allowing me this forum to, to talk about what I think is an extremely important issue, and I think it's probably the uh, most important issue uh, right now, I think, for the next year, uh, at least the next year, maybe even longer, that um, we're proposing um, in a presentation tomorrow night to the City Council. And I wanted to take advantage of, of this forum. I know a large number of people watch the show, and I've been trying to talk to as many people as I can uh, on this, at the City Council meetings, just at different events that I'm at, uh, to talk about uh, where we stand with our water infrastructure right now. And tomorrow night I'm presenting to the City Council a four-phased uh, plan uh, proposal uh, to attend to our water infrastructure and it's called the simply the PBD clean and sustainable water infrastructure project and uh, to me it is a uh, it's a big investment it's a large investment but one that's necessary I, I think certainly as a city uh, one of the the primary services that you need to uh, make available to people is water uh, certainly it's um, a basic function of city government and something that I think um, all cities and towns are looking at or need to be looking at if they're not. Uh, our water and sewer systems are, are old um, and they need an influx of money to, uh, to bring them up to what I think are proper, uh, what our proper infrastructure should be. So uh, I just wanted to kind of maybe explain a little bit about the, the, the four phases, talk about the investment, the impact it's going to have on our taxpayers and uh, where I think uh, we're going and where we need to be. So uh, the first phase is actually something that we've already voted on and was approved by the City Council. It was a unanimous vote. It was $2.7 million that we got from the MWRA. It was a no interest loan uh, for 10 years. We're paying $270,000. That'll be paid out of our annual budget every year for the next 10 years. In fact, it's already year one. Uh, it's already in this year's budget. And that is to uh, enlarge the pipes that run on Route 1. It's about a mile long stretch, kind of over near where Reds is on Route 1, uh, down to about Dearborn Road. Um, and Barry, you know this very well in that area. Our pipes, are uh, run from the six inch, then it goes into a 12 inch, then it goes into an eight inch, then it goes into a six inch. And it causes a lot of backup of water in that area and it has a major effect on water pressure in that whole corridor. Uh, so what we're gonna be doing, um, we're gonna be bidding the work out over this, over this winter, starting the project in the spring, um, and then putting in new piping all in that mile long stretch in Route 1 to make it all uniform 12 inch pipe and all new pipe. Um, and that's the first phase of the project. The second and third phases are kind of going to be done simultaneously, and that's uh, where the bulk of the money comes from. And uh, these projects, I think, are essential. One, for water quality. We need to have quality water in our community. And the second is water pressure. I think there's large areas of the city that are plagued by uh, low water pressure, and to me it's a quality of life issue. Um, you know, every mayor has their own um, things that they prioritize, and uh, to me, uh, we need to prioritize quality of life issues. Uh, I've always tried to focus on schools and parks and recreational opportunities. I've always felt that that's important, uh, but there's nothing as important as, as water and having strong systems. So phase two is um, putting in new piping, enlarged piping, running from our South Peabody Water Treatment Plant on Coolidge Ave, uh, pretty much connecting all the way to the water system at Route 1. It's been a strange year and a half, certainly, and I think all of you know, I'm sure the listeners know, we had a fire uh, last year, last spring, at the Coolidge Water Treatment Plant. Um, it was an electrical fire. 
um, and it was a total loss of the building. So thankfully, we were able to tap into the MWRA water, the Massachusetts Water Resource Authority. Uh, we always had that as a backup system. We still have that as a backup system. However, it comes at a cost. It is much more expensive than what we typically pay. We've been very fortunate in the city that we have among the lowest water and sewer bills probably in the state of Massachusetts. Last time I looked, we were uh, in, that, in the bottom few. Um, but when we had to tap into the MWRA system, our costs went up significantly. Uh, we ended up in just this fiscal year going uh, $2.5 million over what we had budgeted for. Um, and that had to come out of our reserves and, and, and uh, some other pockets of money. Uh, but it allowed us the opportunity to really look at our system as a whole and what we need to do. So phase two is going to be connecting from the Coolidge Water Treatment Plant, uh, putting new piping up Coolidge onto Lynn Street, onto County Street, all the way down to uh, Summit Street, going all the way down Summit Street, uh, connecting to Forest, and then on to Lowell Street and running all the way down Lowell Street, past Sue Chang's, past the high school, and then connecting over to Route 1. Uh, all new piping along that. It's a significant project. It's $10 million uh, for that type of work. Um, but it's, a, it's an investment I think is going to pay significant dividends for water pressure uh, in, in this whole, the whole Peabody Corridor. Uh, neighborhoods like Brooksby Farm have been plagued for decades by low water pressure. Um, and really there's pockets all across the city that have had that issue. Um, so that would be phase two. And also uh, a water booster pump right near the high school that will be able to push water both western part of the city or to uh, more the downtown Brooksby Farm eastern part of the city. Uh, the booster pump is key to this. We need to be able to push water to our, to our stations. Uh, the third phase is the big one, and that was the big decision that needed to be made. Uh, we felt that phase two had to be done um, with ever di any direction we go, but we had to make a decision as to phase three, and that is the future of the Winona Water Treatment Plant. We, um, the D Department, of Enviro De Department of Environmental Protection, which we've been working with now for a year plus, with our Coolidge Water Treatment Plant, has told us that the Winona Water Treatment Plant, which covers uh, West Peabody, pretty much everything west of Route 1, um, is at the end of its life cycle. It's 60 plus years old, uh, it's aged, and it needs a significant uh, investment. Uh, we either need to uh, invest in the Winona Water Treatment Plant, or the other option was to uh, close it down and connect to MWRA, uh, which comes at a significant cost. So we did a number of, uh, uh, did an analysis over the last few months, worked with Weston Sampson, our water consultants, to determine what is the best alternative for the city. And we determined that it is a significantly lower cost to invest in ourselves mm -hmm. and rebuild the Winona Water Treatment Plant. We're very fortunate in the city where we have natural resources to, to be able to utilize our own water. Many cities and towns don't. They need to go to the MWRA. They really don't have a choice, but we have water bodies that we can uh, treat our own water and then distribute it. So um, I'm proposing to the city council tomorrow to, on phase three, it's $20 million to rebuild a, and rehab um, the Winona water treatment plant. Um, and I do believe that that's the right investment for the city from a cost perspective. <coughs> the fourth phase is really just simply repaving those areas that are affected. Um, you know, um, there's going to be some uh, work going on over the next couple of years, um, and that, to me, we wanted to make sure those streets are paved uh, when we're complete. So that's a mm -hmm. total of $36.2 million that I'm asking for to fund this proposal. Now, the good news is, at the end of this work, we will have a brand new Coolidge water treatment plant that's being rebuilt um, through insurance proceeds because of the fire, and then we are going to have a new Winona water treatment plant, and we're going to have uh, significantly improved and new in many regards infrastructure throughout the city. So I feel uh, that at the conclusion of this project, we'll be able to boast that we have uh, the most modern water treatment facilities and distribution systems around. Um, it's a big investment, and it's a, uh, a big vote and an important vote tomorrow. Now, the costs are uh, significant, obviously $36.2 million. How are you going to pay for that? Um, I'm proposing to increase our water and sewer rate uh, to, to fund this project. 
Uh, we have, as I said, among the lowest water and sewer rates in the state. The average bill in the city is $789. Now, in some, uh, you know, in some neighborhoods, it's much higher. In some neighborhoods, it's much lower. That's just an average. Um, but we are hundreds and even thousands of dollars lower than our neighbors um, right now. Um, we have a chart I'll be presenting tomorrow where PBD is by far the lowest, and in some cases we're double and even triple. Uh, other communities are double and triple what we what we have. Uh, I'm proposing that we ask for $118 a year. It's um, less than $10 per month to the average taxpayer. Would bump up our average tax bill from $789 to $907, and uh, that we believe will fund the large majority of this project. It's a big ask. It's a 15% increase, essentially, uh, to the water and sewer bill. Uh, certainly, as mayor, it's not something that I really um, look forward to doing. You know, I'd much rather ask for $36.2 million to, um, you know, build a new school or to build a new police station, which we need. Uh, but to me, water is essential. It's a basic service that we need to provide as a community. And um, I just felt that this is a task that we as a city at this time uh, need to make. Um, water over the, the next uh, several decades is, is going to be critical to our community and, and the quality of life for our residents. I want high water quality. I want high water pressure for people. Um, but it's going to cost some money and it's going to be a big investment. So uh, it's a big proposal tomorrow that I'm making to the council. And I've been trying to explain um, the benefits, why I think it's the right thing, why I think the decision to rebuild and invest in ourselves is the right decision. If we went with MWRA, it certainly would be less money that we would need to spend up front. Uh, but we relinquish control over the MWRA. And I can tell you that the MWRA communities. Um, locally, uh, they're in the $1,500 to $2,200 range, um, and where you know even with this uh, increase would be about nine, a little over $900. So, to me, in a lot of ways, it's a simple decision, but it's certainly a big request. You know, any time that I have to ask for that type of uh, increase and that type of investment, it's never easy to do. And as I said, I, it's not something that I really enjoy. Um, uh, again, there are other projects that I would really love to attack, but to me, this is the right investment at this time. So I, I, uh, you know, I kind of wanted to come and speak about it. Certainly, maybe talk it through with, with you, and um, hear your thoughts, answer any questions. Um, you know, I've, I've been talking to the council now for trying to bring it up at different meetings to say that this is the big issue of 2019, and uh, that's the way I see it. And it's probably going to be a big issue uh, for many years to come. I would say at least a decade. Um, Water is a precious resource, and um, what, what I, I got two things I, I took from your presentation that I, I do want to ask. Uh, then Barry, you can jump in. All right, do sure. your thing, okay? Uh, we can do one F, one F. You do one, I would, whatever. But my, my first you thing is you make the call. <laughs> I, I just want to be uh, to be honest with you. Um, the nature of this show is uh, is always on the on the the residents of the city, mm. as you well know. And we don't always agree with you on, on your policies, and, yep. and it's because we, you know, we try to look at both sides of everything. I, I congratulate you uh, for being a mayor who who uh, spends a lot more time on quality of life issues than previous administrations. One of the reasons that you have to do what you have to do and make these proposals uh, tomorrow to the council is because the previous administrations didn't do anything about the water situation. You know, if we got a we got a, a treatment plant that's is useful, life is gone. I mean, someone was looking the other way or whatever, didn't prioritize it. So, um, as a citizen, I got to say, you know, that's one of the things that uh, schools are one thing. You're right, um, but so isn't water. <laughs> so uh, I have to say that um, I, I congratulate on it. No one wants to pay any more money, of course. Mm -hmm. We all don't want to do that, but. Anything that's good for us usually is we don't get free either. So, um, so I think it's a good. Uh, I think you're making the right decision, at least from where I'm sitting. Mary, thank you. Yeah, uh, it's this huge project, and so at the end of the day, we like the mayor said, we're going to have two state-of-the-art uh, water treatment plants, facilities. Yeah. So, uh, just a couple of questions we can start. So, it's coming from you know Ward Six and Winona Street. So, is the Winona Street project? project is it a teardown is it a rehab 
And I was so glad you said we're not going into the MWRA because when I talk to people in other communities, their bills could be almost as much as their real estate taxes. So I'm glad to hear that. But when we did uh, Coolidge, um, we were at like 250000 a month because yes. we had to use inverted water. So if we have to, I don't know if we're going to have to shut down Winona Street. Are we going to have to use MWRA water to feed West Peabody at the cost of 250 a month, or are we going to be able to simultaneously fix it, keep that water so we don't incur another huge... You know, there's one thing, is when this is financed and paid, people have, we just don't want to see those keep going up exponentially, you know, over the years, and it's well stabilized. So, yep. comment on that. No, that's a good question. And um, MWRA, um, very, qual you know, high quality water. Yep. Uh, we were, I'm very grateful that we had that emergency backup because we did. We had an emergency. We had an unexpected fire, and thankfully we had uh, that emergency backup system. But it did come at its cost, yeah. and you hit it. You hit it right on. It was an extra 250,000 per month uh, that we had to pay, and it was just a bill that you get is, uh, and it has to be paid within a certain mm -hmm. period of time. And um, you know we had to take some from our reserves. We had to borrow some money uh, to make that happen. But uh, that's a bill that has to be paid. Um, there, there have been two options presented to us in terms of the Winona water treatment plant. It's a um, complete gut job um, and rebuild within the uh, structure itself, um, which is what I'm proposing. It's, uh, that's uh, $20.5 million. The second option would be to um, build right next to the existing Winona water treatment plant, and once that's ready, to tear down the existing one, kind of what we did with the Higgins Middle School. Okay. We fortunately had that land. There's some wetlands up there in, that, in the in Winona area. Uh, that could be an issue. But that came at a cost of $27 million. So it's a, about a $6.5, $7 million difference. To me, I think the right investment is to uh, save some money there and just rebuild what we have. Uh, we have a solid bones. We just need to uh, modernize the plant and, um, and rehab it. I think um, that's, the, that's the recommendation that I'm going to make. Uh, Weston Sampson did a, a detailed analysis on this. They'll be at the meeting tomorrow night to answer specific questions on that. Um, but to your question also is there will be a, um, we're anticipating a three to four month period of time where the one owner water treatment plant will be down. Um, and that's why phase two and phase three, the infrastructure work and the booster pump station um, will be going simultaneously as the construction of the, uh, of the work going on at the uh, Winona Water Treatment Plant. And it's important because um, we need to time it correctly that the infrastructure work is complete before the Winona Water Treatment Plant is ready. And that's because the booster pump will be essential to feed the West Peabody water system during that three to four month period of time. Now we do have MWRA as a backup. Um, if necessary, I'm hoping that we can just do that within our own system, and I think that we will be able to with the booster pump. Uh, but we do have the MWRA as a backup. That's that's pretty interesting. Yeah. So you're not planning on using in that period that the one one owner plant is shut down. You're not planning on using. Um, Backup water from w MWRA. No, we have that ability. We also, you know, we also have. Uh, so the, the, the water, the booster pump, is going to be taking water out of um, out of South Peabody and and, and, and just pump. pushing it west. Okay. Is there enough volume to supply West Peabody during those four months from Coolidge? Yes. Bringing that water over. We okay. believe so because the pipes are going to be uh, widened. They're going to be much much larger pipes that will be able to push water, mm -hmm. and the booster pump is essential to make that happen. We also do have other backup systems. We have um, Linfield Water District. We'll be able mm -hmm. to utilize some money, uh, utilize some water from there if need be, mm -hmm. in other communities as well. We we have a working relationship with a number of communities to make sure that you know we help each other out in emergencies. Okay. So I have another question. So in once Winona is done, okay, so Winona treatment plant is up and running, is there going to be a booster pump in that plant? Because West Peabody, as you, uh, you know, I live there, my water pressure, you know, five streets over, somebody has 100, I think I have 50. Yeah. I mean, it's terrible. So um, it's one thing to have a new plant, but we don't want to have a new plant spend $20 million, and I turn on my faucet, and I like, yep. So is there, will there be a booster pump to... To, to help West Peabody, because the other booster pump is really not meant, right? That, that's coming down to Brooksby Farm. 
the, the two, the two, there's actually will be two booster pumps. One will be at the high school. Uh, we also have one at Dearborn Road. Um, okay. Those are both on the side of the highway, uh, on the, uh, um, the northbound side of the highway. And um, these are a critical uh, to push water west. And that's why the, the first phase has to be uh, enlarging the pipes in, on Route 1, because we need to be able to push more water through to get it to the West Peabody system. So I do believe that this is gonna have a significant impact. Yeah. You know, I have it up in my neighborhood. I, you know, we live right near each other. Yeah. I know Symphony mm -hmm. Park area has, has struggled with but water pressure, and that's a big part of why I wanna do this, because I think this project as a whole can really make a difference and, and improve people's uh, water pressure. And that, that's a quality of life issue. Yeah, is. You know, a, as you said, Dick, I mean, you know, every mayor has their priorities and they focus on different things. Um, you know, and, it, and it's hard to second guess decisions, but I do believe that we need to, um, you know, modernize our infrastructure, our oh, buildings, our water and sewer systems, our roads, our bridges. And, and to me, this is a, an essential one. And really, it comes down to water quality, water pressure. Um, you know, there's going to be, I'm, I'm sure, you know, certain moments uh, we'll hit some road bumps here or there. Um, but I'm very optimistic that this is going to uh, have a major impact. Let me ask you now. Uh, are the, are the pipe sizes, are they all going to be the same, the 10, the 10 inch or whatever it is, or the big pipe? It's not going to go, it's not going to be 6, 8, 10, it's going to be, no. is it going to be all the same size, the piping? Yes, it could, it's going to be uniform. It's going to be 12 inch pipes. 12 and the other thing, in, on some sections of Lowell Street, we're either going to do, we're even going to have bypass pipes, where it's just going to be a whole separate, um, you know, we have our pipes currently, we're going to have a whole nother uh, set of pipes that are going to run you know, kind of parallel to what we have now. Right. And that's just completely to be able to move water back and forth to be able to get to our water towers. Okay, yeah. okay. So, so the, one, of the, one of the goals of the project, is not only, uh, you know, improving the, the quality of the uh, water treatment plants that we have in the city, but also um, to get rid of these, these choke points in the pipes where water goes from one, one di diameter pipe to another one, which is causing backup and Okay, that is that whole Route One corridor has been, and, and it has an effect on West PBD, and and it branches out, and that's why I think Brooksby Farm has had issues in the past, and and some other neighborhoods, is um, those choke points. They, they're really causing a problem, and it's been that way for a number of years, and um, that's why I think this first phase is important, because that's going to really make a difference in allowing water to go up, flow up and down that area to be able to get to those neighborhoods that are off the highway. And, and let's not forget the safety issue. You know, we had that fire up at Dearborn. We put our firefighters' lives at, at risk when they didn't have enough water f pressure to fight those fires up there. That area is yeah. terrible. Yeah. So if that alleviates that, that's huge. Yep. You know, you know, having them go into a situation with a mulch fire, that was another one that was a tough one up there. So that should help the, the fire. Let me ask you, uh, Ted. Uh, I agree, Barry. Yeah. The, um, the length of this, how much, how long is this project going to take? Yep. So. I believe for the total uh, to do all four phases, including the paving at the end, um, we're looking at about three years. Three years? Yep. Okay. Okay. Uh, now I have to ask this question, just because I'm a pain in the ass, <laughs> but I have to ask this question. All right. Now this is a major project, obviously. It's going it's, you know, to affect traffic flow in this city. You know that, obviously. Yep. That's going to be one of the toughest questions I think you're going to be facing all, all along. But now we have this pot issue going on too. Now, the the pot facilities, uh, dispensaries, or uh, retail, whatever whatever it is, um, I don't know if it's medi medical now up at, up where the um, casinos is. Yes. You know. Now, obviously, that's like right in that corridor there. So, um, if we're going to have uh, like. You've, I'm, I'm sure you're well aware of what happened in Western Mass when the when the facilities opened up there, the pot facilities opened. Yes. I mean, they had like they had like major tie-ups. The cities, the towns were strangled. Now, they're nowhere they nowhere compare with what we have traffic here. I mean, we're the we're the nexus on the on this part of the the North Shore. Everything goes through Peabody. All the roads, the major, you know, it's going to be, you know. You know what that's going to be. Mm -hmm. So if we got this major project going on, so the, my question is: Do you ever has it has it come up in your mind? Have you considered maybe the location of these medical marijuana facilities 
um, may have to be moved to get get it the heck out of the way of this this project, because enduring enduring lines and traffic lines to get into the, the pot shops yeah. and, and construction uh. is going to be a you know what show. I mean, it's going to be crazy. Yeah. So I mean, I mean, is there any thought process that maybe uh, you know? And, and you had no way of knowing. I mean. Well, who knew what was what happened to Leicester and Northampton? Who knew we were not in that? No one's had been there before. Who knew that that's what was going to happen? Yeah. Uh. You don't think it's going to happen around here? I think it is big time. So I just wanted to throw it. it it's a question. I the, my question is: Have you thought about you know maybe maybe uh, that might be uh, something that it'd be a really negative, more, a worse impact on, on what's going on in, in the construction, than the construction, I should say. So I'm uh, just asking you to think about it. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I can speak a little bit to that, because that, um, I've been paying close attention to what's been taking place, I know, as, as you both have, and, um, and that was always my, my fear, uh, because of, you know, myself, uh, you know, other communities, we didn't know what to expect. We didn't know what was going to be mm -hmm. happening. And, you know, I, I was, I've been very hesitant. Um, I think over time as I've learned more about um, marijuana and the treatment, um, the, um, the ability to treat those that need it, um, I've certainly kind of opened up a little bit more and, um, you know, want to learn and take the time to learn and, and see how it could be here in the city of Peabody. But I did not want to be one of the initial communities to tackle that issue. I did not want to be one of the guinea pigs. I did not want to be one of the opening, uh, you know, one of the cities out of the test cases, because that's what's happening right now. We did because I, I as I learned uh, the treatment, um, the needs for those patients um, to help with their medical needs, we decided to create a, a zone. You know, looking back, I think the zone, um, you know, I, I think I'm more open now to maybe widening that zone or looking at other locations in the city. Um, you know, I think that is something that I think we as a community need to mm -hmm. look at this upcoming year, and I'm open to that. I think initially I wanted to create a zone. I asked the council for support um, and uh, to see how things go. And I, I think it's an education for all of us. Uh, I have had, I've heard some horror stories, and without question, there's going to be an increase in traffic. Uh, and that's why I think we have to maybe look at other locations in the community. You know, I, I think this issue is, is so new and, um, you know, cities and towns are trying to figure it out. You know, I think we have to be able to adjust and adapt to how things are moving forward. So uh, it will definitely have an impact. And, and, you know, being a quality of life mayor, uh, obviously traffic is quality of life, yes. too. <laughs> yes. Oh, so. <laughs> well, it, th there's, there's two things going on. So uh, you, you're more well-informed and behind the scenes mayor than and what I hear or we'll talk to different people, but they're not moving forward at all. And so I think they're kind of sitting back. To, now, they have a medical license. They don't have a recreational because we, we talked about Correct. that. And, and whether, that f f whether that decision gets changed, you know, it's a, you and the council have to handle that. But I don't think they're going to open there in just medical because they won't survive. As you can see, I think this whole thing is about recreational, and anything with medical will probably, well, I don't think will succeed. Recreational will kill the medical. You, you got it. Just like it in Harmony Grove in Salem, yep. they were the first, they're going to be the first ones to have a recreational license. So having said that, if, um, if they don't want to open medical, and you want to reconsider a combination medical, recreational, and another zone, you know, I, I wouldn't see why Centennial Park, with a lot of those vacant buildings, all the traffic comes in off of 128. Just a thought. Yep. Uh, because I think the hesitancy and, and the no action just kind of tells me something. They're sitting back going, you know, if we can't sell recreational, I'm not going to spend $3 million to put up a building and do all this infrastructure work and not be able to sell recreational. So those are big decisions that, you know, those people are going to have to make or whether, and then the carrot on the string, right? for 2.2 million in one week on two, yeah. I mean, you're talking some money. serious money. And now, now you get into discussions on whether that's what you want or what you don't want, but that's gonna be some, when this goes full blown, there's gonna be some serious money and then we have to decide as a community what 
we want to do. And that we, money will look good to pay for this project that you want to do. Too. I'm glad I'm not sitting in your seat, I'll tell you right now, because, I, I mean, I, well, folks, the, I'm telling you, that the, imagine you had to make that decision, and, I mean, it's tough. Well, that it's pressure, is, the pressure is, is yeah, intense. It, it's and you awful. have people coming at you from every angle, wanting this, wanting that, and so now, you've got to make a decision. As far as he, if, if I could, just okay, real quick yeah. on that, because, um, you know, I've, I've taken a very conservative stance on that. Again, I think it was because uh, I was just concerned to, to put Peabody in the forefront on this issue, and uh, I wanted to take a more cautious approach. I wanted to kind of just see how things unfolded. Uh, I'm definitely going to be open in the years ahead to, to, uh, to look at this issue and, and review it um, and see if it works for Peabody. Um, but I didn't know, again, how it was going to be policed. Oh, yeah. I didn't know, uh, you know what safeguards were going to be put in place, what type of inspections, licensing, all of that type of stuff. Um, you know, I, I don't think that there's the... Um, the the money is going to be quite as high as some people think. I don't think it's going to be that high. There's certainly money to be made, but I do think it, it comes at a cost. And I just didn't want the city of Peabody again to be a te test case on this. But I am I'm open. You know, I, I think the city needs to adjust to changing times, adjust to um, new industry. Um, but I, I again, I wanted to be cautious, conservative, see how things go, and then we can adjust and mm -hmm. figure out well how we want to handle it. I mean, that's not a wrong approach. I mean, I just asked because you know we're going to have two major situations colliding at um, yeah. a similar time. You know, and usually when that happens, you know, it, it's. Um, for, for the, the traveling public, it's usually a, a nightmare, you know. So I'm not saying that, you, you know, you, your decision is, the policy decision is, in, in my way, I think, is the right one, okay. But the thing is that uh, when some of these other cities start raking in the money, <laughs> yeah. I, well, I think, I agree tough. with you, I think it's going to, initially it's going to be a lot of money and then it's going to, you know, that's the rub, you know, you know it, 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 take out the infrastructure improvements. I mean, if you had a thousand cars converging on that place at once, you know, all swarming in, you, you know, that is a disaster waiting to happen because those are going to back up all the way pat to the 128 exit ramp. Kind of, block. Yeah. So that's going to have to be, so I mean, to me, move it out of there, put it in Centennial Park. There's tons of real estate, put buffer zones between them because we didn't have any buffer zones on this one mm -hmm. and, and let them uh, do, and, and everything I've seen about it it seems like they're very safe the security it's not drug addicts hanging out in front of that, and that's what that I've that learned too of, yes right so um, let's see what happens and uh, big decisions for you and the council. You know, it is and it was a, it was a difficult decision it was a I struggle. don't want to see Peabody you know we were famous for every time there was a lot of rain we, we, we flooded right we, yeah. we were the flood cap we were like the the, the Venice of the, of the of the west right but I don't want to see us the, the traffic nightmare of the world either. <laughs> well, it's going to have so, a problem is Salem. And, and, you know, I mean, oh. yeah, I want to see how it plays oh. out in Salem. She's going to open five. Yeah. Good luck. And, you know, I mean, quality of life is traffic, too. And unfortunately, you're, you're right at the head of the seat on that one, too. So, you, you know, um, well. everything you do now it, that hasn't been done in the past uh, by, you know, by uh, previous administrations is falling on you. Um, and um, it means a lot of money for the taxpayers. And I'm, we're the biggest complainers about the tax, as you know, the property taxes. <laughs> I want to strangle you sometimes, but you know. <laughs> but, but to be honest with you, uh, no. I mean, really, when you think about it, uh, when you improve your home, what happens? It, you, it costs you money to improve your home, right? So why wouldn't it be any different um, if you want to improve the quality of life for the people in the city of Peabody? You think somebody's standing on the corner like Santa Claus giving it out? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, if they're not. And the money, uh, the money, the potential money from um, pot sales looks pretty damn appetizing when you you got these projects going. You say, "Gee, we could use some of that money to, <laughs> you know, to well, the state's going to have project, it, right? right? They'll have more money for schools and yeah, uh, yeah. So I'm paving, hoping. right? So uh, see how it plays. You're playing it right. It pl see how it plays well, out, and maybe you adjust the zoning, maybe you don't. But uh, no, I think that's an issue we have to look at. It's under further review. Okay. <laughs> Everything's under further review, yes. Now, do you have any other issues that you want to? Yeah, yeah I want to talk a little about the downtown. Yeah. And what's, um, there's a bunch of new restaurants and stuff, but what's happened with Brody's? I mean, Brody's was, you know, was a mainstay down there for many years, a uh, very popular uh, hotspot. And they were supposed to, the building was supposed to come down. They were looking for a new headquarters. Is there any update on Brody's? On, you know, they found a new place. Are they, Stain or like what's what have you heard? Yes, I can speak a, a bit to that, and that's certainly something that is very near and dear to my heart because I've really 
uh, put myself out there to try to improve the downtown, uh, being our ability to handle water, try to bring some new restaurants, uh, some, some new apartments downtown. And uh, a key part of this was Brody's <coughs> because it has have a great following. They're a terrific restaurant, uh, wonderful steak tips. I think I've um, seen you in there a few times. I might have popped into there after a city council <laughs> meeting. <laughs> and uh, you might have been there too, I think. <laughs> uh, but, it's, uh, but that, um, we, we had a potential deal in place, as, as you know. Um, we had another a wonderful gentleman named Pat Tedisco. His family purchased the One Main Street building, the O'Shea building, the O'Shea which building. had been vacant for decades and you know, was really um, you know, an eyesore and, and uh, to me a source of embarrassment for the city. Uh, Pat Tedisco has now purchased the building, put millions of dollars into it, and they had, there originally was going to be a, um, a deal, it was a deal in place for Brody's to go into that corner location. And I, I think it would have been terrific in many ways. Um, and they're two terrific gentlemen that I think the world of. Uh, Mike Votto uh, was the owner of Champion, uh, excuse me, Brody's. And, but unfortunately, they couldn't quite work out the deal. We purchased uh, the building where Brody's is now. Um, because I would like to uh, tear that building down, create some open space, do some further flood mitigation work. To me, that's always been one of the ground zero areas for flooding. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, unfortunately, that deal did not take place. I can tell you um, that um, Brody's will be a part of the downtown future for uh, a number of years so? to come. <laughs> yes, so, I'm, uh, okay. I'm feeling pretty optimistic okay. that Brody's will fit. Nice and thing. it's Don't great. Be greedy. We got <laughs> yeah, it will be uh, Brody's will be a part of the downtown future for years to come, and it'll be nice. La Siesta is doing terrific. Uh, the New Mexican restaurant that opened up, the brewery um, on Main Street is opening up. Um, this will be opening up within the next month, and then also Next Mex Thing, which is also next to Brody's in the Brody's building. They're moving down uh, the street as well. They're staying on Main Street. They're in, uh, putting in a bar. They're um, uh, almost tripling their size, uh, and they've uh, their business is doing terrific. So they're I'm, putting in a bar. The they're putting in a bar. Oh. They have a liquor license. Oh um, wow! And they weren't able to get a liquor license where they were because they didn't have a bathroom. So now they've expanded, um, and I'm really excited about some of the activities taking place. I was going to ask you, um, as far as the, now, the the one main street. Okay, the, the people have asked me; they've gone by and they've seen uh, you know, signs up there, a liquor license and all that stuff like that, you know. And so they, so this is going to be. So it's, it's really um, that building is probably going to be housing a. a there's, no chance there's not going to be a restaurant. There's going to be a restaurant there, right? That's, well, that's, well, that's the game. There right, will be right? a restaurant yeah, at that okay. location. Okay. And I took some criticism, and I can understand why, um, regarding the liquor license. I was very aggressive asking for more liquor licenses. Um, I felt it was needed for the downtown because um, the mom and pop type of pubs and restaurants that we want we're not able to afford a liquor license. Um, the last two, a few years ago, the last two uh, Trader Joe's, um, um, I can't think of the other one off the top of my head, but those were well into the six figures. A mom and pop restaurant that we were trying to bring in or entice to the downtown, we're not able to, to, to spend that type of money in addition to doing the build out and all the work they needed to do. So um, we were able to obtain some liquor licenses. We uh, um, put them into certain locations and now we just have global licenses for the downtown. Uh, but I thought that was necessary to try to help those mom and pops, those small business owners, um, you know, take that big price off their uh, Well, I mean, purchase. the city issues those licenses, right? Yes. So, I mean, the city, it, they should revert back to the city when, you know, somebody, and a they place do. closes now. Yep. They, but there's no way a license should go for $250,000 or anything like well, that. Well, there's still privately held license. These are special licenses we got from the state on home rule petition. You know, like yep. the guy on Route 1 that owned the deli, that was outrageous when he sold that. Um, for uh, Trader Joe's, pay two hundred fifty thousand over two hundred thousand Trader yeah. Joe's. But I mean, look, correct. I mean, this is where I'm having a little hard time understanding this. So, so the, it's a, the city issues the license, right? The city, that's a city license, right? The city. So owns we it. have we have fifty city licenses that we own. Right. No, I'm sorry. Hold on. Fifty licenses that are, are private licenses. Oh, it private. depends on population. So. Yeah, like you know, an established so restaurant. So, who's a private? What what is, what's the difference between a city license and a private? Like Champions Pub. Right. Um, they have their own license. Um, you know that if they were to sell to somebody else, uh, that would be a private deal. 
that can he can go and sell that to somebody. Who did from. they purchase that from? I mean, these private people. Who did a uh, uh, private corp? Previous own previous restaurants and, and oh, really? bars okay, and pubs. Okay, so the city yeah. was never involved in any of those. No, licenses. we sign off on on the deal, but ultimately, okay. um, you know, like uh, Su Chang's, not Su Chang's, uh, P. F. Chang's. They went out of business right. a year ago. They sold their license um, to uh, Bancroft that is there now. Okay. So that was a private transaction. What we did is we went to a home room petition, the city council and I, we were able to get additional liquor licenses that we own that we could give to uh, businesses in the downtown. Oh, okay. We specified well, we businesses to the, the mall, downtown. right? We, we did. We got 10. We kept five for the downtown, and then we got five for... Did they use them all? Because I'm just wondering why would Bancroft buy one when they could have got it uh, for, uh, for you know, for you know regular money. That, that's sure. a strange one. Do you want to take some calls? Sure. Okay. Um, the mayor will take some calls. Thanks for calling, whoever <laughs> on the line. But uh, you caught the mayor at the right time. No one else was calling, so you're on. So, yeah. patch it in. Call yeah. me there. You're there. Yeah. Good evening, fellas. How are you doing tonight? Good. How good, are you? Good. Thank you. Yeah, my name is Bobby Duff. I live in Lusty, and uh, I just wanted to uh, thank the mayor for all his good, good hard work. Is this his uh, relative or anything <laughs> like that? Did you go? Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I think this might be a relative. <laughs> okay. No, that's okay. Well, thank well, you. I we're just poking. Thank the mayor for his time. We just we just poke a little fun at you, <laughs> and I'm sure the mayor's happy to hear that. Why don't you take a? Uh, you should take a little sip of water. You've been going. <laughs> you've been going. <laughs> you've been going. <laughs> He's been going for 20 minutes. Or, uh, no, actually 40 minutes without stopping. Uh, so yeah. we, we, I know. Sorry, I'm a little. We're there. We're there. Call it. We, we hear you. <laughs> Yes, sir. Uh, I just wanted to say the mayor. He looks like George Clooney. What a handsome guy with that beard. <laughs> All right, this is definitely, uh, I think this might be one of them. Yeah. yeah. You, <laughs> this is definitely a friend, right? <laughs> you, you live in West Peabody? Carolina, sweet Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, anyway, so. Uh, <laughs> If, it, if another one can Any work, more? He'll, he'll take some calls if anybody wants to call him. Please give us a call if you want to talk to uh, Mayor Betancourt, 977. No family members. Zero, yeah. <laughs> family members excluded. 0570 uh, if, if you have any questions well, we'll about let Andrea the call. project. <laughs> and, um, you know, any, any other questions that you may want to ask him. Um, but we... Um, we want to. I, I want to ask you about. Now you said uh, you said something interesting about tearing down where Brody's is right now, that that block or whatever. And you said a key thing, and I agree with you. I mean, it's it's like a nexus point for for um, you know the flooding in Peabody Square and all that, and and it's really a focal point of of trying to correct that problem, which is what you want to do. What what kind of would that be? What kind more t more um, more of the the tunnel? You know the the. Um, the, the units that the, were put down to, to carry the water out, or would be, is that what would go in there if, if for instance, it would be heavy construction like that, or would it, would it be the river that fl flows right underneath it? Would it be something like that that you'd be interested in correcting or doing? Yeah, we, it's some different options, and, and this is not, um, you know, this is, to me is a smaller project than one that we've done in the past. We take down the building, uh, we have the opportunity to put in some more wetlands that can just soak up more water, uh -huh. potentially widen the river a bit if we wanted to go that direction. To me, I've always been a big believer in open space. Uh, I like having areas in the downtown where people can gather together for events and things of that nature. Um, but to me, the, um, the flood mitigation efforts, taking away a building that has, to me, been uh, kind of a symbol of our flooding past, um, you know, I think that would be uh, the right decision to make. And, um, you know, I, I, there's some different options we have that I think will help. Yeah, and sometimes, you know, because you, you're taking a lot of, uh, you know, I, 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 I never criticize you for taking on the projects that you're doing. I just criticize you because they, they're all coming at once and it's cost a lot of money. <laughs> can't he spread them out a little? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's really where I've gone. So, can he do two years or something? You know. But the thing is, it just seems like it, it's never ending here in Peabody. There's always, you know, something that, and that's more indicative of, you know, now all of the stuff is falling on the current administration, and, um, but, um, I just hope that that the clearing up the problem 
uh, with, with Peabody Square, with the flooding, does not get lost in all these other projects either. I mean, you started that, you know, it, it, it's got to be finished too, to the best of the city's ability to do it, you know what I mean? So um, that's why I, I zeroed in on this uh, when you mentioned that, because I, I do think there's some unfinished work that can be done there too, and I hope you don't forget that, you know, yep. in, in the midst of all this other stuff that's going on, you know? So yep. anyway, Barry, got anything? Oh, let's see. No, you, you, if you're searching for things, uh, you, oh, you I got, all right, I got one. For beer. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I got one. El Fine Building. I, when I was on the council, that was a, you know, what kind of a show? We just said that, and it seems like it hasn't been cleaned. It hasn't been touched. There was supposed to be a DEP order decree to clean it up. Um, is there a plan to clean it? Is there a plan to develop it? And I don't. What have you heard? Or you know, have anybody come to you looking at a project? The three properties that completely drive me crazy in our city uh, is the Elfine Building, 143 Linfield Street. Um, I think everybody knows that property right next to Stonewood Plaza. Uh, the second is the uh, property right across from Reds on the highway, the Marchese property that you know you and I know very well, yeah. um, where you know uh, they, the owner came in and just leveled acres of of woods, um, and then it's just been sitting for all these years. And then the third one is the 70 Endicott Street, right, Street yeah, Building, the old PMLP building. Um, those three are the ones that eat at me, and, and I'm, I'm hoping to really make some things happen. And the Elfine Building, um, I've been a little frustrated with how slow things have gone. The DEP got involved, which I was very happy with at the time. Um, they, they made an administrative consent to order, uh, order for that owner to do all kinds of work um, uh, to to clean up that building and the property, uh, and John Turk has been terrific. Uh, the Ward One Councilor has been all over that, working very hard. Uh, but we've been a little uh, frustrated at the slow progress of of the work that's taking place there. Um, right now, they've marketed the project that they're, uh, or you know, they're potentially up for sale for the right type of uh, use. Um, we are trying to figure out what that best use would be for that neighborhood. We had a community meeting; it was great. It was very well attended. Um, you know, to try to see what yeah. could fit, what the neighbor's hood would feel comfortable with. I do not want to put, um, you know, to me, um, you know, I, I, I'm concerned about large development projects oh, yeah. going in. I feel like we have enough of that. Um, but we have to try to find something that fits in, some sort of commercial use, um, you know, maybe, some, maybe a mixed use of some sort, maybe some senior housing, whatever the case may be. But we got to get that property up. And, uh, and have it on our tax rolls, have it something that's um, not an eyesore every time you drive by. I just can't believe that a guy can do that with the property and let it sit with all these chemicals and poisonous stuff in there. And no, oh, and I've been off the council almost a year now, and that was six months, but it's been almost, it's gonna be two years. It has been, and it, the progress, there has been some work done there, I will say. Not enough in my opinion. Um, you know, there, there needs to be work done, but there has been some work there. But the DEP um, has taken ownership of that, and uh, they have um, they do not take kindly upon uh, we others getting involved. We used to have security guards there, remember? Yeah, we, we did. Do we still have that or no? We no, don't. we don't. But we'll we'll get a call. Let's take, okay. no. take another call? Yeah. Sure. Okay. Caller, you're on. Gentlemen, are you there? We are. Yes. Well, I hear you, and thank you, Mr. Mayor, for being there tonight. <laughs> Absolutely. Happy to be here. So, Did you hear that question? Yes, okay. uh, and that's so, a good question. I, I um, think what the caller's getting at is, so we're going to do these infrastructure and make our plants modern. How much more, because we're limited how much we can take out of the Ipswich River watershed, how much more development and how much more water can the city take without having to go 
and buy more water from the MWRA. You know, like the one that the, the shopping center wants to put in three swimming pools, you know, that type of thing, and a bunch of apartments and all that. So, you know, I don't know if, if um, community development has done studies to say, okay, this is what we have, this is our capability, where, where will we, the rubber hits the road, where we're in, we'll be in trouble, we can't supply them all. Yep. I think that's what he's, he's probably the And he's right, doing. I think it has been a byproduct of, of some overdevelopment. Mm -hmm. uh, what we're doing now is when development does come in, uh, that developer, that company has to pay the city of Peabody for water and sewer. That was not done uh, in past years. So now we get money uh, from the developer as part of the special permit that we can then put forward towards different projects. Um, you know, it's, uh, you know, the, you hit it on the head of the North Shore Mall, that's going to be a significant oh. um, investment, which I'm very happy about the North Shore Mall, you know, $100 million mm -hmm. is being put in there, but they're going to be, the water needs are going to increase significantly. So do we have enough water with, with, the, with the current uh, um, plant in South Peabody um, to provide that? Are we going to have to buy uh, water from MWRA? To well, that's the other really good news about this project because uh, having the new modern water treatment facilities, they're going to be much more efficient operation. Uh, during our peak, during the summer hours when we, need our, when we have our peak demands, you know, we're looking at, um, um, we've had to tap into the past to get MWRA to assist us during those peak months, mm -hmm. July and August. People are watering their lawns, people are in the pools, all of that right, type of right. stuff. Um, I believe now we're going to be able, even able much better now to produce our own water and it's just going to continue to decrease the reliance on MWRA. Uh, so, so we'll have enough water, what, what he's asking is you think we'll have enough water to s support without those having to go, what, to, without so going go ahead Carla. Yeah. Where's the water going to come from because in, back in the late 90s uh, the city of Peabody was pro providing almost 98% of the water was coming from the city water supplies, which were uh, the Switch River and Spring Pond. We used to have two wells off of uh, Pine and Johnson uh. Street that were shut down because of the contamination. Mm -hmm. But because of our development, almost 30% of our water needs are now being supplied by MWRA before we had the fire. So now we're going to develop TV uh, we're restricted on how much water we can get from MWRA. We're restricted on how much water we can get from the North, North Coastal Basin. So we have a limited water supply and we're developing more and more. And even with efficiencies on the water usage, uh, we're still going to have a water crisis coming up. Every summer we have a water. Our communities, Danvers, Middleton, all those neighboring communities who use the other river have mandatory uh, uh, water restrictions, but PV seems to be void of that because we haven't had that problem. And that's been and that's that's been in part a decision uh, by me is that I did not want to have mandatory um, um, shutdowns uh, water usage. Um, you know, I wanted it to be water bans. And water like, bans. Yeah. I didn't want to have the mandatory. You know, I wanted it to be kind of at the option of the homeowner. Um, but I do believe that um, you know we're still going to be getting water from Ipswich River, the Ipswich River watershed. We're still going to be getting river from our own natural resources, which, as I said, we're very fortunate to have mm -hmm. Upper and Lower Spring Pond. That's where that's what uh, feeds our water treatment plant and, and Coolidge. So, uh, you know, we are always going to have MWRA available to us, and we have taken advantage of it in the past. Uh, particularly during those peak months, July and August. But I do believe this system is going to allow us to ha run a more efficient operation and, uh, and utilize more water and, and uh, lessen the reliance on MWRA, which is only uh, going to make it a savings for us. You know, can I can just say, yeah. the other thing, it, Carla, the other thing was if you read the plan with the tier pricing, and as what the mayor said, the pricing of water in Peabody has been pretty reasonable over the years. Absolutely. And I think and, and I think people just indulge. And when we had that voluntary water field, my, my house looked like a hay field and the guy down the street was was nice and green. So in a way this plan 
de-incentivizes people to just go out and say, I'm going to fill up my pool. I'm going to water till the cows come home. So in a way, I, was, I even looked at it and said, maybe the high tier residential users should even pay more of a fee if they don't care. And they're just going to just use and use and use. And then if it comes down to a water ban, then you have to put it in. There's no, you know, our, our drinking supply comes first rather than watering your lawn. But um, so, in, in, and to your point about, um, you know, these developments, that's where community development comes in and says, I hope they analyze those things when they, when they start looking at housing and apartment buildings and say, you know, what can, what can our city, come to, what can I, can we meet these demands? Right. Of, well, uh, one, so. one, of the, one of the questions I always ask is years ago, I think it was about 20 years ago. Can you speak up a little bit, uh, Carl? I can't, I can't hear, I'm having a hard time hearing okay. you. Okay, about sorry. 20 plus years ago, the city allowed the uh, second meter to be installed for outside water use. Good point. So that uh, they wouldn't have to pay for sewerage. Now, I mean, the city has 20 plus years of statistics The deduct, dedu deduction meters, yeah. Right, because that's using a lot of water at very cheap prices. Maybe the city should have a second or third tier for outside water meters because that's an extravagance that's uh, been very inexpensive for the, the people who have those meters. About 75% of the residents of Beebe do not, do not have those deduct meters. Right. 25% of those people do. Yeah, those aren't cheap meters to install. I think they're about $800. Okay, Carl, thank you. We've got a couple of minutes to go, and uh, we're going to be closing up That's shop That's a good here, point, so, though. But, uh, thanks for calling and bringing up those good points. Take care. Um, so what do we got? A uh, couple of minutes to go. Um, do you want to? Do any closing statement or anything like that? Or? No, I, I just I wanted to thank you for this opportunity. Um, to me, again, this is uh, a critical decision, um, an important um, community effort for the city of Peabody in our, in our long-term future. And um, again, I part of me again would like to come in with something shiny, uh, you know, uh, a new school, a new police department. We just had a new school. No, up there, right? <laughs> <laughs> no but but to me, I don't want another one right this now. This is uh, this is this is the right investment at the right time, and it's really going for the right to, reasons. For the right reasons. Now, that's that, a good to, way to put to it. That, uh, to that po that caller's point, he, he's right, you know. But to correct to correct where we're going to get the water, obviously what you're, what you're trying to accomplish with this project is to use our, better utilize our own resources in a more efficient way. And it seems as though you're really convinced that we do have enough water under our city and you know whatever else we get from the Ipswich River and all that to meet all of our needs. I, I mean, I'm, I'm sure you you sound that way anyway. I feel confident. And in that. and this, these pumps that you're talking about, the you know the, the push the push the water and all that. So, uh, so it's not going to be cured in a day of call. You know the call is right, but it, we've been living with it for a while now, and uh, I can't put my washing machine on and my uh, my laundromat and and uh, take a shower at the same time. You know, so sometimes <laughs> I put the washing machine on. And I get up into the shower, and I'm all ready to take a shower, and there's no water. I said, geez, so, you know, i got to run all the way downstairs. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, we're all in that boat. I'm not the only one. So the thing is, it, it, we've been living with it for a while. It's going to take some time to, uh, it's going to take some time to correct. And um, I, I think you're on the right path in doing that. And we've got to be a little more patient yeah, and than waiting for these projects to get underway. This is going to take us well into the future yeah. in terms so of our at least our they're, they're doing something uh, that's going to, be helpful for the city in the future. So you want me to get out? He's saying, shut up and get <laughs> cut, out. Cut, cut, cut. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, thanks. Uh, thank you, callers, for calling in. And um, Ted, yeah. thanks for coming thanks in. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, for coming in. Thank you. And, um, thanks for the, the crew in there. And uh, we'll see you uh, in a couple of weeks when we ask you to make the call. Thanks for joining us. Good night. Good night.